Hi friends, welcome to my channel, my name's Fiddle. Today is episode number 3 in Ginger Appreciation Month. In this episode we are going to be making a knife, a mask, two pairs of scissor clampy clampy things, and a syringe. And as always, don't forget to check the link in the description. That will take you to the scavenger hunt, where you'll find the list of materials so you can make this stuff along with me. Are you ready? Let's go. Okay, the first little thing we're going to make is the knife. And for that, we need to borrow the cutting strip inside of aluminum foil. Not all of it, just a little bit. About an inch to an inch and a half. But if you can, try to get one of the holes right in the center. We're going to use it kind of like a guide. Starting from the hole, measure straight up. Then from there, cut at a slant towards the other end. But we don't want it to come to a complete point, we want it to be flat. Then going back to the hole, on the serrated side, cut straight up into the hole. Then from the other end, cut along the length back to the hole. And that makes up the tang part of the handle. And speaking of handle, that's what we're going to make next. For this I'm using a corn dog stick, but you could use a popsicle stick if you cut it down. Cut a piece long enough to cover the tang and a little bit extra. Then cut it in half. With the rounded end of the stick, it makes it look like a rounded back end of a handle. Then use E6000 or some other multi-surface adhesive to glue the handle on both sides. You can use a paper clamp to hold it together until it dries. Then once it is dry, you can use sandpaper or a nail file to sand it into a handle shape. Plus all the other little things we're going to be making in this episode. And for the next little thing, we're going to be making the mask. The first thing you'll need is some thin wire, about 3 inches long. Okay, to start making this mask, measure about a half of an inch away from the end of the wire, then wrap it around your finger until the two ends come together, and then straighten them out for a handle. Once you've reached the other end, bend the wire back up and repeat the same pattern again. We essentially want two of the same pieces. When you have the second part made, nip off all the ends so they're the same length. Then you can adjust the shape until you're happy with it. Now we need to make the cloth portion of the mask. For this you'll need a small swatch of white fabric and cut it into an oval shape just a bit bigger than the mask shape you made with the wire. Next add a good bit of white glue to one side. Then sandwich the fabric in between the two pieces of wire. Now we need to slip a tiny bead on the end so it holds our two pieces of wire together. Now we need to trim some of the excess off, but we don't want to get rid of all of it. Now we can take the rounded end of some sort of tool and push the fabric in a bit to give it a dome shape. And finally add another seed bead at the end of the handle, let it dry completely and you've got a little mask. Okay, on to the next one. Using the same wire that we just did, we're going to make a pair of clamps or imaginary scissors. And they're pretty simple to make. Start at one end and make a curly cue. Then just after the curly cue, make a bit of a bend. Then using your first piece as a pattern, make the same thing again. Add a tiny bead on one side. Then slip the other side through the bead, push it all the way up until it's just underneath of the curly cues and both pieces are set even. Bend both ends back into shape, then trim them off even. 
Use super glue or E6000 to hold it all in place. This is what mine looks like up close. Now we're going to make another pair, but just a little bit different. Using the same wire and starting with the same technique where we make one coil for two different pieces. Slip both pieces through the bead up to the same place just like the other one. From the bead measure about half an inch, then cut both ends off evenly. Then make a curl at each end. Use E6000 or super glue again to hold it all together. These really come out looking more like tongs than anything else. And finally, for our last piece, we're going to make a syringe. And for this, you'll need the very two end sections of a small pipette. Once you've gotten that cut, set it aside. We're going to start making the other components. And the first thing being the finger rings at the top. For this, you'll need the same wire that we've been using, about a half of an inch long, and to start with a loop, but this time it needs to be much smaller than the loops that we've been making. Then flip it around and make a loop at the other end. Then at the center point, make another bend to bring the two ends together. Next, we're going to make the needle, and that is just a jewelry head pin. Add some glue, and then pull it straight down until it sits on the ledge on the inside. Then add glue to the finger ring wire and glue it in place. And finally, for the finger thumb plunger, we'll need another flathead jewelry pin, but this time we're going to add a piece of sequin onto the head to make it just a bit bigger. Finally, glue it in place. And with that, it brings us to the end of our tutorial. I hope this gives you ideas for your next project, or you join along in making it with me. If you're new, welcome. I'm glad that you're here. If you haven't already, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and comment, as it all really helps. Next tutorial, more little things. Thank you, Ginger, and I'll see you next time.